I had like tragedy after missed opportunity after missed opportunity for streaming my entire like career until like H1Z1 and PUBG. And and I, I just never stopped because I knew that if I just kept trying, I knew that at some point I would go from point A to point B. Are you listening? Oh my God! One more second at the bottom south in front of me. Directly under. Oh, oh my God! God! Oh, my God! Dude, I hit him for oh, look at me. My name's Ninja and I'm gonna win the first game. <laughs> there are reports that you're making more than a half a million dollars a month. I believe much of that coming from Twitch. I think that that literal one match with Drake made it okay for everyone to play their game. What, what would break the internet? Perfect. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Most people know Ninja as the king of Fortnite the world's most famous player who earns millions as a Twitch streamer and occasionally plays the games with celebrities like Drake. But all of this is only a small part of Tyler Blevins' journey as a professional gamer. Before there was Fortnite, before there was Halo, before there was Ninja, there was just a young kid and a passion for video games. Tyler grew up in the suburbs of Chicago alongside his two older brothers. Their fascination with video games was fueled by their father, who would buy them all sorts of games that were actually for him to play himself. Tyler's first console was the Sega Genesis, and he loved to play any and every game that he could get his hands on from then on out. It wouldn't be until 2001, around the time that he was 10 years old, that Tyler would get a real chance to fall in love with the first person shooter genre. That was when the worldwide sensation Halo Combat Evolved was first released on the original Xbox. Usually, his mother didn't allow for violent games to be played in their house. But with his brothers now being older and his father wanting to play it himself, Halo managed to find its way into the Blevins household anyways. Him and his brothers played it the day it came out and they absolutely adored it. But none of them loved it quite as much as Tyler who would practice the game constantly. He wanted to get good, so he worked on it. It wasn't long before he was destroying his brothers on a consistent basis, and with time, the gap between them only continued to grow wider. Then Halo 2 came out, which Tyler loved even more than the first, but the real game changer for him was when his cousin introduced him to Xbox Live. The need to rank up was all-encompassing, he would literally schedule his days around playing Halo. And this was at a time when he was balancing high school, varsity soccer, and a minimum wage job. As he continued to improve, he realized something. He wasn't just destroying his brothers anymore. He was keeping up with the top players in the game. He learned about tournaments, major league gaming events where teams in Halo would compete for prize money. It took some convincing, but his parents eventually agreed to support his passion for competitive gaming. His heart belonged to Halo, and so from then on out, his mind was set on competing and becoming the best player in the game. In 2009, Tyler entered his first MLG events playing Halo 3. They were MLG Orlando and MLG Anaheim, getting 29th and 25th respectively. His results weren't amazing, but with each loss he learned and improved. Then Halo Reach came out in 2010, and this is where Tyler, now known as Ninja, showed off the results of his hard work and practice. He formed the team Turning Point with three other players, and together, they managed to place within the top 16 at every single event they attended. Ninja has Legit's number and Legit can't do anything about it, but Turning Point still- Oh! God, why would he do that? Ninja full of faces and ripping faces! It was with these results that Ninja began to make a name for himself as one of the better players in the Halo community. He was an aggressive 1v1 specialist with excellent map awareness. But his reputation wasn't only growing as a result of his tournament appearances. In 2011, Ninja started streaming Halo Reach on Justin TV, the website that would eventually become Twitch. 
The viewers came to watch his Halo skills, but many stayed to enjoy his on-stream persona. Even at this early point in his career, he was laying the foundation for the high-energy personality he's known for today. With a little consistency, it wasn't too long before he started to build the following. He was now juggling university, a minimum wage job, consistently streaming and becoming a rising star in competitive Halo. His dedication to his craft and responsibilities was the main ingredient to his success. But things are only just at their beginning for Ninja. With Halo 4 on its way out, Ninja would find himself playing for the team Warriors, where he would reach the absolute peak of his competitive Halo career. Let's see what kind of damage this man can do at this point in time because he's been warming up like... It's already picking off the first kill, getting the rail gun. Gun back, this is a problem. Oh, look oh at the God. kill in the air. I can't do that. I wish I could. I would but using all of the attributes, all of the loadouts that Halo... To win it all. Sneaking behind the other team right now, putting shots while his team's ring three. By the end of 2013, Ninja had won four tournaments, and at almost every other tournament, he got second place. He was a Halo superstar, and his life was changing dramatically. With the money he was making from tournament winnings and streaming on Twitch, he was able to quit his job and focus on growing his career and brand. Then, as his income continued to grow, he decided to drop out of university and commit to streaming full time. By that point, he was making around $3,000 per month, and the only thing preventing him from growing more was the opportunity cost of staying in school. He was now an established professional gamer and one of the bigger streamers on Twitch that was regularly pulling in around 4,000 viewers per stream. And that number might seem small now, but back in 2014, it was a pretty big deal. In the world of esports and Halo, he was kind of a celebrity. There were so many new and amazing things happening in Tyler's life. Through Halo, he met new friends and his girlfriend. He got to travel around the world and grow as a person and as an athlete. From the beginning, it was clear that Tyler had a mindset focused on learning and improvement. But his passion for competition is what fueled his hard work ethic. It made him determined and unwilling to give up. That was his secret to becoming a top player in Halo and a big streamer on Twitch. No experience in his life went unwasted. Used to be a soccer player in high school? Apply team communication skills to Halo. Refine the art of improving at a game? Apply that to improving in other areas of your life. He approached his dreams with discipline and a warrior's attitude, preparing himself for everything that he could. But sometimes life throws a curveball that you just can't be ready for. And that's what happened to Tyler when he woke up one day with blurry vision and a sharp pain behind his eye. Uh, I have a retinal detachment. My retina has been detached somehow. Don't know why, but I, I, I was uh, possibly supposed to be blind or like could have gone blind in my right eye at any time after it. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that it hasn't happened already and I'm going into surgery on Monday. I'm not gonna be able to stream or pretty much do anything for two weeks straight. I have to just kind of like look down. I have to be looking down for two weeks straight. It could be a little bit earlier. Like I could get better a little bit earlier and I also could get, and I also might need like three weeks. I don't know. I don't know anything yet. His recovery was supposed to take two to three weeks to heal, but the weeks kept passing and things weren't getting better. He had to get a second surgery after developing cataracts, which meant even more time away from streaming and competing. But no matter how much time had passed, the vision in his eye would never fully heal. His absence went on for much longer than he expected, and his Twitch channel took a massive hit as a result. When he finally did return to streaming, he was barely averaging 300 viewers, not even 10% of what he was getting prior to the surgery. This would be the start of a long uphill battle. Eventually, he did return to competing, and was even picked up by Cloud9. But the community had already moved on to the next Halo game, so Tyler had to play catch up. This led to a decline in his tournament results compared to what he was earning in Halo 4. He continued to grind out his stream, but things just weren't picking up the way they had before. Halo as an esport was seeing a diminish in popularity, and that made it harder to get new viewers. 
this dream life that he had worked so hard to build was suddenly rocky and uncertain. Unsure of what his future had in store, Tyler returned to school. It would seem that the professional gaming dream was coming to an end. They say it's always darkest before dawn, and I think that's a very fitting way to describe this period in Ninja's life. The future looked bleak, but something was about to happen on Twitch that would once again change Tyler's life forever. A game called H1Z1 King of the Kill suddenly exploded in viewership on Twitch. If you were anybody on the site, you were probably playing this game, and if you wanted high quality gameplay, the ninja had you covered. After spending years refining his skills through competitive Halo, he had excellent aim, map awareness, and a deep understanding of player movement patterns. It was exciting to watch as each game unfolded, knowing that Tyler was capable of mesmerizing plays. And of course, if you were a fan of Ninja, then it was funny to see him rage. Oh, fuck you, faggot. The fuck you say to me, you little shit! <laughs> how are you how are you not in fucking school? You kiss your mother with that mouth? As he started to stream more H1Z1, his viewership began to seriously grow. By this point, he had once again dropped out of school and returned to streaming full time. He continued to play Halo, moving between different teams, but more and more, his stream was starting to take priority. At TwitchCon 2015, he won the H1Z1 Invitational, establishing himself as one of the most skilled streamers in the game. Tyler and his family also made an appearance on the show Family Feud, which was partly made possible by Tyler's status as a professional gamer. As 2016 came and went, Tyler continued what was already working for him. He kept competing in Halo and placing within the top 8, and he kept streaming H1Z1 to the delight of his viewers. Then, in 2017, the Early Access for Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was released, which absolutely dominated Twitch viewership. It became the most watched game in no time, and Tyler started to include it in his daily streams shortly after. And, well, you already know what I'm gonna say. Tyler was really good at this game too. As a streamer, Ninja wasn't quite as big as someone like Dr. Disrespect or Shroud but he was maintaining a dedicated and sizable following, and his skills in PUBG were undeniable. Oh my god. Oh my god. He competed at the Gamescon PUBG Invitational in Cologne, Germany, getting 14th in solos and 4th in duos. It was obvious that he put a lot of work and a lot of energy into his stream and into his brand. Just like before, his revitalized success was a product of his hard work. And this all positioned him to be in the right place at the right time for what would be the most groundbreaking moment in gaming history. In the latter half of 2017, Ninja's fans started asking him to play a new Battle Royale game that wasn't fully developed yet. You already know I mean Fortnite. His first time playing it on stream was that October, but it wouldn't be until December that it became the main focus of his channel. By that point, the game was starting to get very popular, for a few reasons. For one, it was free, but it also didn't require a good computer to run, and it introduced a unique spin on the battle royale genre by adding in a harvesting and building mechanic. The building mechanic allowed for all sorts of wild plays to be made, and because there was nothing else like it, the meta of the game was pretty much non-existent. That meant that streamers like Ninja and Myth were basically defining how to be good at Fortnite. And you could do some really cool stuff in the game in terms of combining the building mechanic with movement and positioning. Naturally, clips of Ninja ended up in fan-made compilations and Instagram videos. And up until that point, Ninja's own Instagram was being underutilized. That is, until he discovered that his gameplay clips were being posted there and getting a lot of views. So he started posting his clips directly to his own page. But what he never could have predicted was that an Instagram account by the name of Champagne Poppy would start following him. That account belonged to none other than superstar rapper Drake himself. Tyler, shall we say, slid into his DMs, 
and a few days later they made plans to play Fortnite together on his stream. Now, by this point Ninja was becoming one of the most popular streamers on Twitch. He was already big in the Fortnite section, and as the game continued to grow and slowly overtake PUBG, his viewership grew right along with it. But nothing could compare to the day when him and Drake would finally play together. It was legendary. It was unheard of. It was the crossover between worlds that nobody saw coming. Tyler, Drake, Travis Scott, and NFL star Juju all playing Fortnite together on stream to a live audience of over 628,000 concurrent viewers. That stream was groundbreaking for Twitch, groundbreaking for Fortnite, and most of all, it was the true beginning of Tyler's transformation into becoming the face of gaming. Uh, but I think the, it was like the day March 14th was playing with, playing with Drake was literally what just completely made it acceptable to game. Oh, right here. Oh my God, bro, that's kind of crazy. Uh, hi, yes, hi, hi, Ninja. How's it going? What, what would break the internet? And kind of, kind of peaked, honestly, over. How epic is the hut? Oh, epic! Because I know. So this is actually made out of the fabric of the of the tuxedo. How important is Twitch becoming in this gaming ecosystem? Fortnite. <laughs> like in the stadium, it's incredible. I'm so happy for you, and I was so relieved to see you talking. I was like, this is a good, this is the perfect dude for this to happen. Thank to. you, man. Now, reaching this level of fame and notoriety is absolutely incredible, but it also comes with its negative side. See, back when Tyler was a smaller streamer, he had his fans, and for the most part, the people who didn't care for him didn't bother paying much attention. But now that he was the most well-known gamer in the world, for those that didn't like him, it felt like he was being shoved down their throats. And that's by no means his fault, but the thing is that Ninja has a very specific style of entertaining people. He's loud, animated, silly, there's kind of this childlike quality to his sense of humor that his core audience loves. But for a lot of people, that type of persona can feel immature, or annoying, or cringy. Oh, TDN, yeah. Oh, you my papi chulo. But, oh wait, yeah, you don't know. Uh, yeah. He's also had to learn that his new, enormous level of influence meant that his words carry a lot more weight to them than they used to. If I have one conversation with one female streamer where we're playing with one another, and even if there's a hint of flirting, that is going to be taken and going to be put on every single video and be clickbait forever. This was met with backlash, as many female gamers felt that this was a detrimental way to use his enormous platform. But these controversies and negative reactions only make up for a small part of Tyler's post-Drake career. He's also used that platform to raise money for charity. He's put out messages with good sentiments, like why it's not okay to bully. He tells kids that they should stay in school and not make gaming their first priority. After all, he managed to make a career out of Halo while balancing school and a job. So he's proof that you can chase a dream and commit to a backup plan at the same time. At E3 2018, he entered and won the Pro-Am Fortnite bracket with electronic music producer Marshmello. This was around the same time that he crossed the 10 million subscriber mark on YouTube. And finally, that September he once again made history by becoming the first ever professional gamer to be featured on the cover of ESPN magazine. Nobody could have predicted that Tyler Ninja Blevins would take over the world of gaming in such an unprecedented fashion. But when you look at his mentality, dedication, and the effort he puts into his passions, it's not hard to see how he's managed to attain so many achievements and persevere when the days were at their darkest. Tyler's mission is to always be improving, and that's a necessary quality for becoming great at anything you do. 
whether that means gaming, sports, or who you are as a person. That's what Ninja stands for and what makes him such a good role model. It's more than just luck.